This is part 42 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss scroll event and how to handle it using jQuery. Scroll event is raised when the user scrolls to a different place in the element. It applies to window objects but also to scrollable frames and elements with the overflow CSS property set to scroll. Let's understand this with an example. Let's flip to Visual Studio. Here we have a div element with a lot of text in it. And if we view this page in the browser, this is how it looks like. Notice the div element has got a scroll bar. The reason we have a scroll bar here is because we have set the height to 200 pixels and width to 300 pixels. So that height and width is not enough to display all this text within the div element. And notice we have set the overflow style to scroll. So that is the reason we've got scroll bar within the div element so we can scroll you know, down and look at the complete text that is present within the div element. And notice we also have a one pixel solid black border and that's because of this border style here. So now as we scroll within the div element, you know, scroll event is raised and we want to handle that scroll event. This is very similar to click event. For example, if you have a button and when you click on that button, you know, the click event is raised and we can handle that click event in jQuery code. Similarly, when we scroll within the div element, the scroll event is raised and we can handle that in jQuery code. So let's see how to handle this scroll event and we want to display a message like this, scroll event handle you know as the event is raised and as we handle it we want to display that message scroll event handle so let's flip to Visual Studio so we want to find this div element so let's use the jQuery element selector div and when the scroll event is raised you know we are going to use this um, shorthand function scroll when that event is raised we want to call a function and what do we want to do when the event is handled, we want to display this message, scroll event handle. So we need an element to display that message. So after the div element, I'm going to include an HTML break and an H3 element. And I'm going to set the display, you know, basically style attribute and display style to none. So initially when the page loads, we don't want this H3 element to be visible. So I'm setting display to none and let's also set color to red. Okay. And here we want to display the message saying scroll event handled. Okay. And so when the scroll event is raised and as we handle it, we want this H3 element to, you know, show up. So I'm going to find that H3 element again using the element selector and then I'm going to use the CSS function and then set the display style. So I'm going to set the display style to inline. So that is going to make this H3 element visible so we can see the message and I want that message to slowly fade out. So I'm going to call fade out function as well. And let's specify the time in milliseconds, 1000 milliseconds. So this message will slowly fade out over a period of one second. So let's save these changes. Look at this. When the scroll event is triggered on the div element, we're calling this function and this function displays this message scroll event handle. And that message is going to slowly, slowly fade out over a period of one second. So let's save the changes, reload this page. And look at this, as we scroll down, we see that message scroll event handle, you know, and it slowly fades out. Now let's look at another example. Now we want to keep track of how many times the scroll event is raised and handled. So we want to display the message scroll event handled, you know, how many ever times it is handled. Okay, so let's see how to achieve that. Now first of all, we don't want this div element to be invisible on the page load. So I'm going to remove that display colon none and here we're going to say scroll event handled how many ever times you know let's say for example zero times when the page first loads and to display this number I'm going to use span element and let's display the number inside that span element okay and within our 
handler function, the event handler function, we want to find this H3 element and we want to update the count of how many times the event is handled and that count is present within this span element. So let's find this span element instead of H3 element okay and then we want to update the text inside that span element so I'm going to use the text function so the next thing that we want is we want to keep track of how many times the event is raised so I'm going to create a global variable here so let's say the variable name is count and let's initialize that to zero and every time the scroll event is raised you know this anonymous function gets called so at that point we want to increment the count by one so count equals count plus one and then all we want to do is update the span element with that count so we are finding the span element and here is that span element and we are setting the text to the new count okay now here we are you doing that in two lines instead of that I can simply say count plus equals one okay it will do the job so let's save the changes let's reload this page and look at this on the initial page load scroll event handled zero times and as we keep scrolling look at that you know the event gets raised it will be handled and the variable is keeping track of uh, you know the count of how many times the event is raised and handled and that is dynamically displayed within that span element as we scroll up and down let's look at one more example now we want to display the message saying whether the user has crawled up or down okay so now we don't need this variable anymore so let's get rid of that and within the h3 element at the bottom we don't need this text and the span element so let's get rid of that and inside the event handler function we need a variable so variable and let's name this current scroll position and to get the current scroll position so I'm going to use dollar this so this here refers to the development uh, in which the scroll event is triggered and I'm going to call a function scroll top so this is going to give us the top scroll position which is zero and that will be stored in the current scroll position variable as we scroll we get this scroll position using this function okay the vertical scroll position and you know to see that in action let's actually update this h3 element you know with what we get in this variable so I'm going to find h3 element and let's call the text function and pass the variable current scroll position to that okay so let's save the changes now and look at this as we scroll down the scroll position you know is increased and as we scroll up the scroll position is decreasing and as we reach the top look at that the scroll position is zero okay so the scroll top function is going to give us the vertical scroll position all right now based on that and then outside you know the event handler I'm going to create a variable and let's initialize this so let's actually call this last scroll top equals zero okay so that's the top scroll position the top vertical scroll position now if the current scroll position if it is greater than last scroll top you know we know that the top scroll position is zero and if the current scroll position is greater than that then we know for sure the user has scrolled down so at that point I'm going to display this message you scrolled down so let's put that in an if statement else you scrolled up another important thing that we need to do is update this last scroll top position so I'm going to take that variable equals 
current scroll position. So let's save the changes, reload this page and look at this. As we scroll down, it says you scrolled down and when we scroll up, you scrolled up. Okay, so it gives us the scroll direction. That's it for today. Thank you for listening and have a great day.